Eliminating the gender pay gap. Nationwide, it's estimated women are paid 76 cents for every dollar a man makes. Here in Oklahoma, it's even worse, up closer to 73 cents. A new study finds the gender wage gap costs Oklahoma women more than $6 billion every year. Talk about that issue. We're joined by State Senator Kyle Lovell this morning. Thanks for being here. Always glad to be here. And let's start with that, the state's gender wage gap. How did it get so bad here in our state, and what are you doing right now to try to fix this? Well, it's been a historical problem. See, in 1965 it was when uh, the, equal, the uh, first bill, parity uh, bill, was passed. And when it was passed, it was about half the cents. It was about 50 cents on the dollar. So we've seen some progress. I just believe that it's time that we need to update the bill and to bring, actually bring it up to the 20, 21st century and make it actually have some teeth to it That's so to make it better. Right, so you're trying to get something passed here in the state uh, which would not only punish uh, you know, employers who didn't pay equally, but also you want to let employees talk to one another about what they make. And isn't transparency here is the most important part, right? Because you can't get paid the same as somebody else if you don't know what everybody else is making. Sure. First off, let's deal with the penalty. I don't think that it's, a, I don't look at it as a penalty. I look at it as a, something to bring it up from the 1960s because the penalty hasn't been changed since the 1960s. If it would have been kept with inflation, the penalty that uh, it would have been would have been close to $1,000. What I'm trying to do is make it something a little more reasonable, less than that. But the second point of uh, transparency, I think you're right. Currently, under current law, if two employees talk to each other about their salaries, that's grounds for dismissal right there. And I think that's kind of the crux of the problem is uh, two, co two colleagues can't sit at the coffee table or water cooler and say, hey, here's what I make, How, what does you make? And then that way, people can discuss it and then they can find out what the actual differences are. And if they do have an issue, they can't be disruptive with it. They can just go and talk to their employer. And hopefully, over the long term, we can get this done quickly. So then why can't this be passed? I mean, this has been an issue since the 60s. Why still today, in 2016, are we talking about trying to make sure that women get paid the same as men for the same job? Well, it's amazing because I don't look at it as a left or a right issue. I look at it as a right or wrong. And it's something that, um, to me, I have two young daughters. And I want them to, when they get to the workforce, to have the same opportunities and the same uh, chances that men do. And I just think that paying someone for the same job equally is a, a, a matter of fairness. And so why it hasn't happened so far, I don't know. It, that's part of the reason why I'm trying to fix it. And you've also focused a lot on education during your time in the legislature. And you've recently um, introduced a bill and a bill that was passed last year that allows mm -hmm. districts to talk to one another about maybe an issue with a teacher or a concern about an educator. Why was it important to you to pass a bill like that? Maybe give our, our viewers the Reader's Digest version of what that was. Sure. And then maybe some of the success that we've seen since. Well, this is actually something that's kind of in the same vein of being transparent. One of the problems that we've seen in Oklahoma, and if you've noticed, just about every week or every two weeks, there's another teacher or school employee having an inappropriate sexual relationship with a kid. Well, as I said, with two young daughters, when I drop them off at school, I want to know that they're taken care of properly. Well, what the bill did last year, it was Senate Bill 711, and it was a bipartisan bill, and it was something that communication between districts wasn't, when we have 535 school districts, districts couldn't talk to each other. So a school predator could have sex with a kid or rape a kid, then resign before charges were brought and move across town and go work for another school district. Well, the two school districts could never talk because it was a personnel matter. What our bill did was it created a database so that administrators can look up a teacher and say, hey, we're getting ready to hire this person, but we needed to make sure, kind of like a background check, sure. make sure that they haven't been uh, accused or found guilty or whatever of having uh, an inappropriate sexual relationship with a kid. And I do want to point out, uh, since this has happened, there have been 11 individuals placed on suspension. Another five individuals go before the state board uh, next week. For right, that's, and, and, so, and that's since November. So you have to think about that. Since November, close to 15 or 16 predators have been caught in our schools. I think of that, and I know that you had uh, Superintendent Hoffmeister on last week. She was very instrumental in helping us get this done. And it's something that I believe that we need to be you know, talking more about because we need to get these people out of our schools. Sure.